this old lady is Burn. not ready for that yeah. kind of level of immaturity. Yeah. And <laughs> this I was like, level. I got her, checkmate. Yeah. And then she looked at me and she's like, yeah, I do and I'm gonna f you in the ass with it. <laughs> 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 we oh were like heated God. and when she said that i was like oh and i just started and she just turned around and walked away didn't even give me a chance to rebuttal i just started dying i was like oh well fuck i, I mean she got me dude in wow. five four three two one what's up everybody Stop welcome it. to another episode of the genius brain podcast Can't we have our very <laughs> special guest patrick <laughs> t up. riley stand-up comic extraordinaire Woo -woo! And then we have this guy. This What's up, guys? Guy. Nick, the motherfucking- I'm David's assistant. Train conductor done. The train conductor. Dude, boop, boop. New fanny pack every time. How many fanny packs do you have? Yeah, how many do you have? This is only- I, have, I only have one other one, okay? So don't even mm. say that. Do you really? Yeah, and I've been wearing this for the past like eight months. Why are you so defensive, bro? Yeah, <laughs> do you yeah, see the anger? I, wow, I don't dude, get what's going right, on. Right. What bothers me is your failure to notice these things. And I told you I got a new fanny pack and you don't even care, you dude. You tell me. You don't even care. There's no announcement made. You don't what, even care. I gotta get you, you a new fanny pack, man. No, nah, this is this is a cool one. Shout out to my guy, Marlon. He's the one that gave it to me. So the front pocket, I have um, chapstick. Cool. That's, Second that one. one pocket is dedicated to just chapstick, dude. Okay, okay. okay continue. Keys. I have two different types of hand sanitizer because some nice. people, cool. you know, I got. So I like where do you put beach. your tampons? Oh, that's the big pocket. <laughs> <laughs> These are my tampons. Right? I'm sorry though, nice. but you know, like when you just it, rolled up napkins. There's a, there's a general there. rule for fanny packs, especially for like having it look good. Your fanny pack is about a good seven inches too big. Your that shit is, that is made a big ass. Well, I'm compensating for something. I have a uh, checkbook in here too. You write checks? Well, I don't know. I, I think I forgot to take it out. So I have a checkbook in here. Is that to, is this that is for your for, retirement fund? Yeah, How old are you? What this the is for function, checks, dude? dude? This is for function. When have I go you to the heard of? I gotta write a check, dude. You write checks at the supermarket? No, of course not. Oh, what I am I, eighty yeah. years old? Fuck I off. hate you, dude. What the fuck is this? I haven't written a check in ages. I know. I, I don't I, I think I, I I forgot to take it out. You know what the shitty thing is? Like all this stuff started going online, like these direct deposit stuff. But then uh, what's it called? I think eight years ago, I bought like ten thousand checks from Costco. I was like, I'll never need to re-up on checks ever again. <laughs> How much did that cost you? Like fifty bucks. It wasn't much. Wow. Costco is pretty cheap and they're like legit. I got the whole leather binder for it and wow. everything. That shit hasn't been touched in five years. Because there's nobody takes checks yeah, anymore. Nobody. Fucks with checks. Like, yeah. Oh my God, I wasted so much money. Unless you start a company, you start your own payroll. <laughs> I would be so rich right now if I didn't buy all those checks. Uh, it's like when people buy uh, wallets to put their money in, but they but the wallet costs like six hundred dollars, but Ugh. now they have no more money to put it in. <laughs> it's like the fuck. Do fuck people really thinking? spend money that much for, Dude, for wallets? The Louis Vatten ones, Bot <sighs> Louis Vuitton. Dude, man, that's that Vatten, brother. That's just expensive. As well. What what what's like the one like? Say you had so much money, what's the one name brand that you would like buy yourself? In terms of what? Anything, any like say like Louis That's such Vuitton a broad or, question, or Gucci. Fucking loser. Yeah, or like Gucci? Gucci or like you know Goosey? something Goosey. 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 Something like something like a wallet. Like, what, Goosey. What's a, mm, let me Goosey. let me let me think Goosey. about like this. an unnecessary. I probably get me a set of the what's the I forgot what the the, the type of leather it is. It's like the damier damier. Don't this want. is so out of, this is so out of my league. It's the Louis even, Vuitton. I never heard of Louis that. Louis Vuitton. The luggage duffel duffel. Those are pretty Duffle cool. Bag. Yeah. Because I feel like that's in part of being bougie, but also kind of hood at the same time. Yeah. Uh. So I would get the Louis Duffel. <laughs> nice. And then I would get the the Louis uh, fanny pack. Oh. Because yeah, right, I think I've trained enough now where when somebody calls me a fucking loser, I can sock them in the face. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah right. Yeah, that's yeah. That's like, you have hey, that range. You have nice that range. Fanny pack loser. And I'm like, that's funny. Muay Thai. Muay Thai. Oy. Then you teep his knee and fuck your whole shit. <laughs> you know, like, like, he's like, oh, he goes, I'm sorry. You didn't know. I he listened to your podcast. Your biggest weakness, asshole. Bam. <laughs> 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 My Achilles heel. <laughs> he knows. Why is it a Chinese mom? <laughs> I got bullied by yeah. this guy. Just wait for you to teep me. <laughs> <laughs> So what would you buy then if you had that type of uh, fuck you money? Uh, same. I'll do the same. Whatever. No, 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 no. You do not get to have that bag because I don't want us to be twins. You know what? I don't. True. I think I've, I'd have a really hard time because how much is, are those bags? It's like, I, I think the double is like five grand. I, I might be lowballing it too. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Well, I don't know, man. I don't think I could really bring myself to buy something like that. I just said yeah, I I in this world, yeah. you have expendable money. 
You can, yeah. And you have to buy something. Okay. Two things. I gotta know. Learn. I gotta learn more about fashion and all that stuff first, and then second, I'll probably do like. Man, I'm like really not imaginative at all. I, you what know what? You, shoes. What companies do you know? Shoes. Okay. Shoes. 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 I like like the blame like cheap shoes though. You know what? I'll, I'll get a pair of like Jordan ones. Those are cool. Every Which one? The one from the Last Dance. You guys want the Chicago <laughs> the ones? Last Dance. Yeah, dude. Oh the, yeah. The OG ones. I don't know why I thought of a reality. Like, and they're they're like a hundred. Okay, one more thing. <laughs> one more thing. What would you get? Um, this guy is the worst what if person ever. Yeah, been. dude. I'm like I'm bad. It's like what no if I gave you a million dollars? What would you do with it? Well, Probably you know, invest it. You know I got taxes right, so I gotta make sure I save enough for tax. It's like shut the fuck up, dude. I hate you so much. <laughs> I'm the one like, that I'm the one that brings up the, the proposition. I have no good answer. Yeah, you the electrical. Have no <laughs> the electrical is like, well, a thousand a month. Gotta yeah, pay the electrical. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Gotta like, make sure I save some money for my mom. But what's 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 uh, how many how many uh, how many kids do I have? Um, do we have a future? Am I saving for college? How much of my socialism is not bad. Like, oh, <laughs> socialism, like, uh, you know, what? I'll probably get like, uh, dude, I have, I, I literally have no answer for you. That's the sad part. All right, Pat, let's just move on to somebody else. <laughs> I mean, I don't know a lot of fashion shit, but I would definitely get a baller ass suit. Yeah, you know what? Awesome. Shut the suit. fuck up. Too late. That's off yeah, the that's, table. Hey guys, that's I'll what get, I'll get. I'll get a suit like a gangster ass, like James Bond type suit, Ooh. like that. Bang, just, just nice, just, a, just. Oh, yeah, I know what I would I get. Feel like it. Okay, you know, I want to wear it's brunch. You know, your time is fucking over. No, no, no. Anyways, <laughs> bang! Hey, I got say it. Rolex, say Rolex. Rolex, like a cool I, Rolex. Oh, oh, a cool watch. Would I would cool. get a cool Rolex. I think a watch would be cool. Ooh. Or a, I mean, a, a, I would if I had a lot of money, it would be a car for me, like a dope ass old school muscle car. Yeah. Like, I feel like if I got a muscle car, people would be like, "What do you think? You're white." That's all, that's all I get. Like, what do you think you're white? What? You don't, you don't like, get what? to have a Mustang. You eat those. <laughs> Whoa! Damn. It's Shut like Gran Torino. You get a cool. You know what? Actually, I would yeah, get, dude. You could be Clint Eastwood. Oh, that's right. Get off my lawn. Yeah, you exactly. You can get goops. that going. You know, Clint Bang. Eastwood from His that movie heads. taught me a lot of racist terms that I yeah. never heard of. Yeah, me I too. never heard of a spook. Yeah, never... dude, a spook is one Spade, where I was like, I oh was shit. One? Oh yeah, a what? Zipper head. Spade. I think you said. Spade. What is that referring to? I think the black folks. Oh, yes. oh, because uh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Zipper, head zipper head because of they would run people over the with tanks. tanks. Yeah, and then you have yeah. zipper that's line. That's pretty. That's pretty nice. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty nice. That's, nice. That's, a, that's an intense one. That's a cool there catalog. Po the Polish ones in there when he gets into the racist banter with the Polish uh, barber. What, what does he call? Oh, what does he call? Some I don't. I don't remember. Dumb Polak. Some oh, yeah. And then oh, he has some other words. Standard, bang, right? bang, bang, bang. Hot dog bratwurst. I don't know. He says hot dog bratwurst. Rogies. Things like that. Yeah. Such as are fire. Oh shit. What? You know what? He you was know like what? the most likable racist in that movie. You know? Yeah, <laughs> he was. He was like, oh, this is because you're like, I get it. He's racist, but like, he's kind of cool. The, it, it's <laughs> interesting. It's interesting because in that film, I heard none of those people, the 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 Hmong cast members, except for a couple who are still acting now. Yeah. Um, they they weren't really actors. They were just like Hmong people of that community. Yeah. And so when I was watching, I was like, their acting is not that great. Yeah, it was really. There, it was the guy, the kid that like liked him or whatever. Yeah. It, like I remember there was a scene where he's like banging on the door, and it's literally the shittiest thing I've ever seen. I need to rewatch. When he's he locked like, it. He's like, ah! <laughs> and then he like, kind of like looks at the camera, and he's like, oh no! <laughs> he's he's like, like, keep going. Whoa, what the okay. fuck, dude? Yeah, I That's remember that really scene. Bad. That was the one where everybody stopped and was like, "This is really bad." That's really bad. They, they said that Clint Eastwood for that movie, he was he was method for the whole time. Like he was method acting the whole like. Dirt, or is, like I between, think it was just him in between the set in between <laughs> the takes. He was staying in character the whole time. I think that literally they thought that, but it actually was just him. Yeah, he's <laughs> racist. It's just was, that dude. He was calling yeah, everybody gooks and stuff. Like, like, wow, his 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 he like takes his role serious. Yeah, like wow, fucking spicks. His craft. It's like he's in character. Wow. Wow, he That's is Clint. He's when are we going to shoot this film? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're shooting it now. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> fucking yeah, gook. I knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking slant eyed gook. Dude, like, I wow. love that. I remember I was watching I Am Legend, and there's a scene where, uh, like it's like a flashback to like his family. He's trying to get there. Like he's trying to put them in a helicopter mm -hmm. and they like leave or something. And there's like this protest outside of the helicopter, like let us in because they won't let certain people with like the little eye scan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had the virus, whatever the fuck. And it like zooms in on this lady that's holding a baby and she's crying. And like there's people behind her like, yeah. And there's this one black dude like to the left of her who like is laughing and he keeps looking into the camera. Like he's like, he's like trying to act mad, but he keeps cracking up and he's like looking at you like, ah! And he's like, ah! <laughs> bro, it's the funniest shit of that's all dope. time, dude. I was laughing. We my could all be actors off. right fucking now. Right now? I think we could do it right now. If they got if they got that shit, we could do it. Yeah, that's Let's true. Let's act huh? right now. Act, I, act be, be sad. Something <laughs> sad. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. we, we both did it the way we both tired. the same way. We're tired. Oh. Like we pout. All right, be sad. Be sad. Hey, you're at the vet. Your animal. Uh, your oh, dog. let's do scenario oh, shit right yeah. now. Okay. Right. Damn. You're the I'm first not, bro, one. I'm a terrible actor, bro. No, I don't bro, give a fuck. On. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Uh, all right. I'm like, sweating. I'm like sweating already. <laughs> We're no dinner. <laughs> Here we go. These are my uh, acting coaches. So you just... Um, just, why do we yeah. always do scenarios, this is man? Great. I love uh, it, dude. So you, and why am I always first? You are it. married. Yeah, You're in a very yeah. unhappy marriage. Uh-huh. Okay. It's raining outside. It is a you've had a long day at work, right? Uh-huh. I'm going to be the woman and I will be nagging you because I've also had a shitty day. Uh-huh. You just got fired, but you're scared to tell your wife. So you act emotionally and you lash at her. That is the scene. Here we go. Scene starts, door enters, you Wait, walk in. so specific. I love yeah, how specific yeah. that was. I got to like, <laughs> I want to give him some stuff. That's yeah, why. Yeah, I'm so I'm good. the guy here. I'm You're, you're the, the guy. Dude. I'm the you're, woman. You're my, okay. You don't yeah. like me. Can, yeah. I, can I have like a you backstory like, you on like, why? You like BBWs. So I'm, that is I. Perfect. That is B- I. And that's you're what I like. BBW. Can I get some backstory on like what we argue about and like what we're unhappy about? No, this is what you have to create as an actor. Oh, shit. So remember, you just got fired. Wow. So I got to take it in my own hands. Yeah. yeah you got to create the universe, okay. brother. And I will I will even help you out. I'm going to start the scenario. Okay? Okay, okay. okay. Where the fuck have you been? Wow. I work all day and I come home and this is how you talk to me? Oh, like me taking care of the kids isn't fucking work? Have you ever changed diapers with two fucking twins before? Diane, I these- maybe if you eat a fucking salad for once, I wouldn't be so mad when I come home. You said you'd like smashing big cheeks when you first met. <laughs> And uh, I kept these cheeks around for you. I don't like cellulite, but I kept them nice and pocky for you. Right? Nerve, Just for you. The uh, nerve. The you, fucking nerve. You think I want to come home and see that cellulite on your fucking thighs every night? Fat shamer. Wow. I do love it, though. Fat. I do love it. <laughs> yeah, you don't love shit. And first of all, look at the lights. Huh? You can't even pay for the fucking electricity bill. <laughs> You're a loser. You can't provide. And your penis is small. Wow. Hey, man, don't say that about, don't say that about my penis, man. Your penis is so small. It looks like a laser battery light. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Disgusting. Do you, do you know what happened to me today? <laughs> what happened? I lost my job. And it's well-deserved because you don't work here, so I bet you do the same shit over there. <laughs> Diane, pussy. You're, be- <laughs> pussy. You're being a real fucking bitch right now. Not that Are enough. you going to hit me? Uh, Are you going to hit me? Whoa. If you weren't 6'2 <laughs> and 350 pounds. Wow, that's a big enough exaggeration. <laughs> now we're getting a little personal. <laughs> Maybe. I would have the balls to hit you. <sighs> you didn't have balls when I met you. Why would you have grown them now? Oh. You I'm, knew I'm what you were getting right into now. when you met me and I was a battle rapper. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you upset about? Wow. Dude, that was great. Wow, that was great. That was good. Wow. I think he lost when you said you're keeping your cheeks nice, big, and pocky, I think is what you said. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know why I just used that word, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My cheeks are fat and pocky. I was like, ooh. <laughs> and I was, I was thinking, I, and you I lost. That's I immediately, you actually lost. I immediately mm-hmm. thought about like the Asian snack, pocky. That's what I thought about. Yep. You threw them off. And it threw me off a little bit. Yep. I and tried to stay in it, but there was a shift. You gotta like lost. give me a heads up when you that say something. That was good though. Things. That wasn't bad. You did I tried. Good. I tried. That wasn't bad. Yeah, that I tried bad. to bring it this time because usually I'm like, uh, you did bring it. Yeah, you brought it. You tried. I'm, dude, I'm ready to go yeah, to improv, energy, bro. dude. This podcast is brought to you by Fiverr. 2020 is a crazy year, especially for businesses. I should know because I am a business owner, and boy, did I have to make some last minute moves. But when I need last minute work done in a timely manner, I always use Fiverr to hire freelance work because when you need things done in a jiffy, you got to get that freelance work. And listen, you could be launching your own business and you might need graphic work, video work, web programming, whatever you name it. Go to Fiverr.com and find the freelance work you need. I have used Fiverr for just about everything, especially especially when it came to graphics and web designing. That's not something that I'm great at. And as a business owner, I do need to understand how to delegate this work to other skilled workers. And I go to Fiverr to find those people. 
Listen, I knew exactly what I was paying for up front with no negotiating needed and specific deadlines that needed to be met were met as promised. I don't want the hassle and headache when it comes to hiring people out. And Fiverr had a lot of reliable people that I could use. It was easy. I love it. So check out Fiverr.com and receive 10% off your first order by using my code GB. Find all the digital services you need in one place at F-I-V-E-R-R.com, code GB. Again, that's Fiverr.com code GB. I'm ready to be an actor. It's going to be Nick and Pat now. Oh, that's right. So, Pat, this is your coming out moment. (sighs) Nick is your best friend Uh, since you were five years old. You guys are now 22 years old. You just graduated. It is graduation day. And you guys have been talking about Smashing Poon throughout the whole fucking year, but he's always wondered why you never went out with him. And you're going to tell him why it's because you are coming out and you actually have a crush on him. Ooh, Perfect. you guys are yeah. in a car and you're watching a drive through movie. What is the movie? White Chicks. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> this is in 2002. All the movies is the perfect time to come out. White Chicks. <laughs> yep, it is, it is White Chicks. 2002. For some reason, in 2020, you haven't seen the movie yet. And it's being played <laughs> And they the have a random screening. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. And go. Action. Hey, so, so, like, I know they're... It's like Marlon Wayans is as a white chick, but like she's he's still pretty hot in that, you know? What do you think? Wait, I'm the gay dude, right? And you're saying that gay shit? He's the gay <laughs> <laughs> Me, bro. No, I gave you, I gave you a lob. I lobbed it up to you. You don't even catch the ball, dude. That's a perfect lob. <laughs> he, that's not a sign of a good actor, bro. He can't even play. He can't even play the guy coming out of the closet. Hold on, I'm the gay dude. Why are you doing this gay shit? <laughs> Only me, dude. Hey, this is a... oh, and scene, dude. Oh, well, what? No, 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 no. Let's that was a gem. Again. Why did you take the raw? I specifically said it was yeah. his. Well, I just took some liberties, bro. It was, it was, it's a, it's a, it's oh, a, is it plot twist? You're also gay? No. Let's well, just go. Let's, yeah, that was a plot twist. That's not a plot twist. That's just. You're straight in this scenario. I know I'm straight. Yeah. I'm, I'm only just, doing this for the L- LGBTQ plus uh, fans out there. I think it's, uh, L- is it, is it gay pride month? This, no, it's not gay pride month. What do I think is gay pride month? I think it might I think, be. It, it is, think it right? is. I think it is. I don't is. know. I think it is. Or Shout what was the last month? Damn. Let's look it up. Because they had I'm pride. Sure I know they had pride. The Pride Parade yeah. like a couple weeks ago. Uh, LGP. Because I think uh, uh, Junbi is actually uh, celebrating it. We're, we're uh, celebrating it for you. You see the UFC do that? They had like custom walkout shorts. And instead of like the white lettering, it was like in the, the Pride color lettering. Oh. And that was pretty cool. I was like, that's a nice touch. Shout out uh, to the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah. Y'all been through a lot of shit and now your voice is going to be heard. My Come man. on, baby. Hell yeah. So let's try that wow. again. Let's try it again. No, okay, I, okay. I like the How way about I this? started. How about that? Let's just start. No. All right, this no, 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 we're, we're trying here. That again. Now we're here. Bang! We're in. The, we're watching the movie. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll start. All right, good. Thanks, Nick, for inviting me out to see me with you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, man. You know, it just we do this all the time, and like, why you're whispering like that? Because we're in a car, and no one I'm else. Can <laughs> 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 no, because uh, I, I just this is my voice. You making fun of my my fucking voice? <laughs> Well, it's usually you don't talk like that, and that's why I just thought it was kind of weird. But this movie's pretty good, right? Yeah, this movie's great, dude. I love this movie. Vanessa Carlton. I love this song. Yeah. You know what? Terry uh, Crews is so jacked. Nick, I gotta I gotta be honest. We just graduated. Uh, you've been a close friend of mine for a long time. And uh, I know you think it's weird that I, had, I never came out with you, and uh, you never really seen me with a girlfriend. But uh, I didn't know how to say this, but... All those times when we were younger, we'd have sleepovers and we'd sleep in the in the same bed. And yeah, you thought uh, you felt something poking your leg, and I I told you it was the Xbox controller because we just got done playing Halo too. Uh, it, it was actually my dick, dude, and because I was hard and I'm gay and I like you. <laughs> so you're telling me that one time, two years ago. When you slept over at my house and I woke up and you had your hand around my dick and you said you were sleepwalking, you're telling me this is a lie or was it, were you actually sleepwalking? Did you do that in your sleep or did you do that on purpose, man? I need to know. That time I was sleepwalking, but I wanted to do that while I was awake. All right. Well, thank you for being honest with me. I appreciate that. But um, I, I, I like you, dude. All right, well, let's do this, man. 
<laughs> that yeah, is the least easily best turned. Easily turned. scenario ever. Wow. Yeah, dude. You know what's crazy, dude? Is actually I did have a homie. I'm not gonna say any names. This did I talk the, about this? No, I mean, we haven't. Okay, this I is didn't. one of the best stories of all time. So he's one of the homies that we grew up with, and uh, <laughs> we've long. Well, at first, we, so he was like this, like kind of Mexican, like thugged out dude, and. Uh, so he had these crazy upbringing, crazy stories. So we're like, damn, dude, like this dude's a hardcore ass dude. And then little by little, like, he, like, oh, he would spend the night and shit. And like my house, everyone used to crash there. And like he would sleep sleep next to different dudes, different nights. And there's no order to this shit. You just sleep wherever you sleep in the sleeping bag. Sometimes you sleep next to Nick. Sometimes you sleep next to Alex, whatever. Bang, bang, bang. But little by little, like the first story came out from one of our homies. He came out and he's like, hey, man, like I was sleeping next to so-and-so. And uh he was kind of, he, he was grabbing my dick, dude. Like what? I, like I woke up and like I felt him like kind of touching my dick, and we were all like, "What the? F- get the- this we're like, story was the inspiration for crazy. Said, oh, like you're mm. wild." <laughs> and we're like, "No way!" We laugh. We're like crazy. And then a week later, hey man, I was sleeping next to the the, the so and so, and like that happened too. Like what the fuck? And then little by little, like all the homies like had their story. And one day he slept next. He was on the floor. And he was like, hey, man, my back hurts. Do you mind if I sleep on the bed with you? And I was like, yeah, I don't care. I was sleeping. And then I felt, I woke up because I felt like, I felt like this. And I was like, and I woke up and I smacked his hand. I was like, yo, what the fuck are you doing, man? And he like, he was like, woke up. He's like, oh, sorry. Like, I thought it was the TV remote. Like, I thought it was the TV remote. Like, thank you. First of all, thank you. I was but like, no. <laughs> how long were you touching my dick before you realized that like, it wasn't the TV remote, right? Like, he was doing TV like the TV remote twisties. has a weird mushroom shape. He was doing tip. twisties like this with his thumb and shit. And he was oh, like, oh, I'm my. trying to change the channel. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, what the fuck? So we always made fun of him for it. Yeah. Uh, and we all, he hasn't come out of the closet, but we're pretty sure he's gay because what the fuck? Did um, you guys have another story? Well, no, we're still, we're friends. Yeah. I mean, he molested us, but we're still friends. But like out of like out of a group of like 10 dudes, <laughs> what the out, fuck? out of a group out of 10 dudes, <laughs> all 10 of them have a story. And this dude used to always come up to me and like, I'd always come, I wasn't around as much, but I would come around a lot. And um, everybody in the group knew that like I didn't drink. Yeah. And there, everyone was like, oh, come on, Nick. And I would never drink, right? And every time we hung, and he was always there when we go kick it, mm-hmm. and he'd always be like, "Hey man, like you want to like, you want to grab a beer? Like I'll grab a beer with you." And I was like, "Oh no, man, I, I actually don't drink. What if I put the shot in my mouth and I passed it over to you?" And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. "Well, I guess I have to. I'm not gonna <laughs> be rude." You know? But like he would he would always just be like, every time I see him, and it wasn't like I wouldn't see him after like a month or two. It was like yeah. like every other weekend maybe I'd go, he'd be like, "Hey man, like you want to drink? Like you want sure you don't want a beer?" He'd always be like enticing me to like grab a beer. Like, hey, you want to grab a beer? Like, oh man, like, hey, have a beer with me. Have a beer with me. And he'd be like really pushy to the point where I was like, after a while, I realized I was like, this is. And then after hearing their stories, dude, I don't know how like because because like in if, jail? We, if we look, no, he's not. But I would look back like he actually like would molest us, uh, and we were always like we would just make fun of him, and he'd get mad. But like we would all like we never were like hey don't come around like we yeah. were still like he's the homie. He would always kick it. Like but like it would be to the point like we'd be at a party. This is so fucking weird. This whole dynamic. But we'd be at a party <laughs> and like someone would crash like in the other room. Someone would just like knock Drunk. out, and then we would like be like playing beer pong or something, and then we'd be like okay where's so and so, and then we'd be like wait where the fuck is so and so, and then we'd all run in the room like ah like save yeah. his life yeah. like hey hey, and he'd be in there and we'd be like what the what are you doing, man? He'd be like, "Oh no, I'm just checking on him, you know." Blah, blah, blah. And and then he would leave, and then we're like, "Ah, but he's still the homie." <laughs> like, isn't, isn't, yo, that, but isn't that so weird though with like guys? Because if you look at a bet like this, right? I feel like guys are so hardwired, so fuck, weird, bro? right? Yeah. Like as a when you think about that situation, it's like you guys got molested, yeah. But for some reason, in a guy's head, it's like it, there's a safety thing. It's like, well, if he really did something, I'd fuck him up. Exactly, right, exactly. You know. And one of our homies did that. Like he, I guess he was. The guy in question was sleeping on the floor and the homie was stepping over him to like grab something. And he stepped over him one time and he felt the hand go inside his basketball short. <gasps> and 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 he slapped the fucking hand, was like no, he slapped him in the face. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, I, I thought it him. happened twice. Did it happen once? I don't know. I, I just know that he slapped him. In he the slapped face. him in the face, was like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? And I guess he pretended to like be asleep. He's like, oh, oh. And I remember one night we we're all hanging out. And I'll, this I'll, guy is the worst molester on earth, bro. Like, <laughs> you need to get better at your molesting. Yeah. Right? Your technique is terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's like he <laughs> just slapped in the face. He goes, <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's not very efficient. And yeah. I, I guess another one of our homies, and 
he uh, was sleeping on a bunk bed and he was reaching up and trying to like reach for his. Why does he keep doing it in, during the sleep time? I don't know. That's dude. The only time and we would it. all bust his balls and he would still. I, but after a while, it did stop. Yeah. So that's why it was he like, because he was trying to say it was a condition where like they. A dick this, grabbing condition? Yeah, yeah, in the middle of the night. I have, like, I have, a, I have dick colitis conjunctivitis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what it was. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. But it's now a, looking it's a back, serious disease. Like that's so not a cool thing to do. Like that's yeah. not a, as we're older, we realize like thing to do. That's like, not a good thing to do to my friend. Yeah, you don't do that but to your homies. We would always be like, but Danny's still not, he's cool. He's still that fool got you guys got molested. That's crazy. Yo, yeah. So and then we would. I remember one night we were all kicking it. We were <laughs> all kicking fuck? it, and we we're all sharing our stories about this dude. And um, oh, Tiff? Tiff was there. And then she was like, oh, my God, like, guys, that's not OK. Like, because, you know, she's, we're just laughing. She's a social she... worker. So she's just like she her mind is in that, that space. And she's like, that's not OK. Like, he can't be doing that to you guys. And then we were like, ah, whatever, dude, whatever. Yeah. The next day we went to Disneyland and then we, we it was like 6 p.m. And uh -huh. It was just me and Tiff. And we just got off Cars Land and we just got off and we we're about to walk out. She goes, I don't want you hanging out with blank anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? She goes, it just. I was thinking about it and it just really bothers me that he was doing that to you guys. And I just, I just don't want him around. Like, do you think you could stop him if he, if he tries that to you? Like if he does that, if he tries something on you and I was like, yeah, I would imagine so. But like, why are you bringing this up now? Like, this is really like on your mind, huh? And she goes, no, I, I was just thinking about it. Like, I was just thinking about it. I've been thinking about it all day. And this poor girl was thinking about how we Tiff, all got yeah. like fucking. I just find it. It's, by this. It's, so, it's so odd because this is such a very, it's an interesting social experiment about how that sexual assault thing happens to a guy and what it means to a guy versus a girl, right? Because right? yeah. if you put it in the, in this, because I keep on reading these comments where guys write, <clears throat> well, if that happened to a guy, nobody would care, <clears throat> blah, 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 blah. But I, th th what it goes to show is that for a woman, a woman would care for the guy. Yeah. But it's the guys that don't, care because they don't feel an immediate sense of danger exactly right sure. which is so interesting because i keep on reading this this argument on twitter when, when they talk about this topic specifically they go oh if a guy did that stuff girls wouldn't care i think girls would care because they empathize they yeah. see that situation of it happening they, to them. if they've yeah. been in the, the same shoes yeah. but then a guy has this thing of like i don't know if it's because of it's like a machismo thing or because we joke about it or we, or we laugh about it a lot or maybe it's just because we just feel safe that if he does, if he really had some ill intent, I'd fucking yeah. break your fucking arm. That's how right. I feel about yeah. it. Yeah, that, that's it me personally. It was like weird enough to be like this is weird, <clears throat> but then like the way we we would just make all make fun of him because yeah. it was like, well, we're yeah. gonna clown you now because like you can't be doing that. Yeah, and, and twelve then, times. Yeah, and then it was like kind of like. I, I don't I don't really know. We were just like really but like it, definitely it wasn't until know. like a couple years ago where we started to be like, yo, that was kind of fucked up. Right? <laughs> like, like, yeah. Two weeks like, ago, like, I was that like, I think I got molested by the homie. Yeah, dude. right. <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I, think I, I got molested by the homie. <laughs> like it's like, not the coolest thing to do to your boy. You know what like, I mean? Yeah, it's not cool. Especially if it's like uh on the context of they're not okay with it and it's without consent, and then you start doing it. That's when it gets a little slippery. It's so Who weird. Knows? That guy, that guy's a little molester. Yeah. Yeah. He was a little muster. What in the fuck? But it's so I'm funny how all you guys kind of like had your own moments to like slap the fuck out of yeah. him. Or like... and, and then, but then he was still chill. But then it was like, like we're still like, I, I if he, if I saw him, I'd talk to him. I'd be like, hey, what's up, dude? How are you? Bob? Yeah. Cause you yeah. didn't feel. Who knows what, what he was going. I don't know what the fuck was going yeah, on yeah, with yeah, him yeah, yeah. to do that. But uh, that happened. I and wonder he, what type of he was a friend. He was a friend, you know. That happened. I wonder what if that like type the, of behavior still continues in what he does now. Like, like every group that he goes to, he just he just gets slapped in the face. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's yeah, like how come he hasn't switched up his technique? The jig was up, so he was like, I got to find a new group of friends to try this. Or thing. you should just come out the fucking closet and yeah. develop healthy relationships. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. mean, who knows? I don't know what happened to him in his childhood or whatever. But. Was he just? I wonder if he was doing that in hopes that one of you was gay. Just he hot. might have been. Damn. He might have been. I like I said. I don't. It's I don't a hail know. mary. I don't it was know. like litmus test. He's like, okay, if I just grab. Because I'm, I'm sure it's it's a weird place to navigate, right? It's like trying to figure out like grab my dick. He's like, I feel blood flow. Yeah, I, I knew it. You're the one. Blood I knew flow. it. Felt it. That's it so fucking weird, man. And it, it all That's happened. Really weird. We guys were all weird. we were all pretty young too, right? Like, I'm like 17, 18. Yeah. So it's there's a gray area there, you know. Obviously, it's not okay, but at the same time, it's like. You could understand podcast. for sure weird as fuck. Dude. Yeah, you could understand like okay, this but dude it just, is kind of confused. It's funny that or... I just realized like a month ago that yeah, I was like yeah. that probably wasn't the coolest thing. Huh? <laughs> that's so odd. And like, why did we keep kicking it? You know. And yeah. it, but I still do like he is a good like I don't. It's the weirdest thing. It's it kind of like, goes over your head, or sometimes it just like you don't put the pieces together after like the in the grand scheme of things. 
when you start well actually you guys were all telling these stories though like and you guys would always tell these stories yeah because it's like if you're getting molested you're gonna be like what the fuck man yeah yeah you, it's weird because this is like a really funny stand-up set yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, there's something here there's something it's a really funny stand-up set but at the same time when it's a real story it's always like it's kind of fucked up kind of fucked up, up. but, it, but it's, it's funny too at the same time kind of that's such an odd well, thing. Well, it's funny for us. What's funny well, it's is funny that for you guys because you guys, you guys, it's your guys' experience. It's so. just like he was like totally not cool act, but we're still cool. Yeah. And it's just like, we just clown you. I don't think, see, this is where, is it weird that I'm like, I'm trying to come in here with like, hey man, when I was, I got molested too. And they're like, by who? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who by who, David? To do that to you? Well, there, I was, I was at school, right? And I had some peanut butter and jelly. And, and, te- made and up the teacher far. was like, David, so. Can I have some of the peanut butter and jelly, right? And I was like, sure, Miss Miss Chang. Chang. And then she was like, oh, well, I'm just going to put it on your lip. Boop, and then I'm going to taste it off your lip. And I was like, wow. that's weird. Yeah. I, too, am one of you. <laughs> it's like, are you trying to... What the fuck are you doing, guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and it's that's cool, what we every YouTuber does to yeah, get yeah, views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to like join. It's fine. It's like, you don't have to join. I I, I do. I too have done this. It's like that girl that I roasted on fucking Instagram where she was like, I've been racially profiled before. This was 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 the first video you did. I forgot her name, but she's a Korean girl with fake tits. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, she's like, she's like, first of all, apparently you have no idea how many people dislike her in general because there's people who have worked with her in like the import modeling world. And they Mm -hmm. said she's literally the dumbest person they've ever met. Somebody told me the story about her where she, uh, they literally met her at a club and she was like trying to get favors from like this uh, this club guy. So she kept on offering a threesome for him and shit like that. Whoa. People told terrible stories about wow. her. Like, yo, this girl is a fucking- She goes straight to threesome. Yeah, she's, she's the, and you know, I, the reason why I didn't do a follow-up video because she kept on going hard at it. I think she's like mentally, something's yeah. a little off mm. about her. So now I just feel like a bully. Mm. So I didn't want to give her any more attention. But you know, if she gets hit by a car and dies, might piss on her grave. <laughs> but you know- <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> she was like that. she was saying some crazy shit though. Yeah, she was calling. Yeah, I saw a little bit of the clip. She was saying some wild shit, and then also on top of that, it's like whenever you hear somebody that starts a conversation when they're about to talk about something serious, and they start by saying, "I am like everyone knows me, like I'm, I'm a the very best caring person. person. No, you're not. Like I'm very humble. I'm very giving. If you get to know me, blah blah blah. Yeah, whenever yeah, anybody says that, they're bad shit crazy. You're not. Yeah. Something is off because nobody with that's actually caring or humble would ever start a conversation to get you to listen to what I'm saying by saying, hey, I am all these qualities, these great qualities. Yeah, like, here's so my resume. Me. Yeah, yeah, trust me. And it's like, no, dude, that's not how that shit works. That no. shit is earned. Yeah. Right? Right. Exactly. If you're a good person, people generally know. Exactly, dude. They know yeah. what's up, bro. They could, they could see it. They could see it. You think you're a good person? <sighs> it's questionable. Nah. Not really. I think you're too good of a person, dude. You need to have a little, you need to have a backbone, dude. Yeah, you, you gotta fuck some people over every now and then. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> feels nice. I feel like I do sometimes, though. I know? don't think you do. I feel all. like I don't give enough to some. I think people. it's coming out like over time. I've I feel. I feel. You know. More, more, you know what thing in, in my mind though, like recently, is like I feel like I don't give enough to the people that like take care of me. Sometimes. Like who? You know, like it's a lot of people. A lot of people. Like whom? I just don't know how to. Like I don't know what, what that entails. I don't, I'm just. Coming? I'm trying to talk with my hands oh. and be like intellectual and things like that. But you know, that's is it how I your, feel. Is it your sisters that you treat like shit on a daily basis? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I waterboard hey. them. I spit on them. I do all these things to them. No, not not not, not particularly them, but just other people. Like, why don't you do better, huh? Yeah, I will. I will, <laughs> sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. Why don't yes, you fucking do better? Excuse me, before you like assassinate my character, I just need you to know that like I am a very good person. I'm very mm-hmm. humble. I am not I racist. To charities. I'm, I have plenty. I have so many black friends. I have, oh, I have all so the black many. friends. Oh. Like, you know. And give me names. Devon. 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 <laughs> Devon. <laughs> we'll just start saying Devon Tala. But when someone says, I have plenty of black friends, you're like, All you right, definitely dude, do. Relax. Relax. Hey, weirdo. hey relax. what a weird like thing yeah, to say. Like, okay. Especially in cool. a time like this, you know? Yeah. But whatever. It is what it is. The thing about you, I think you're, you are a nice person. Thank it's you. just I that, that. Some, you just like, uh, you're too nice sometimes. That's the only thing. And you got to yeah. stand up for yourself. But I think I have seen that yeah, coming right. out. He gets pushed to the edge so fucking far, dude. And you could see the cliff. You just choose to get scooted over there. Like I, I'm like, I'm, just just one more second. Maybe something will, good will happen before <clears throat> I get pushed off the cliff. Yeah. That's my you mindset. You need to set those motherfucking boundaries, man. Setting boundaries with people is probably the most soul satisfying thing I, I, I do all the time. It's yeah. like, Oh, I know who you are. I know what I'm going to get out of this relationship. Cut it off right here. I expect nothing more for you. If you do give me more than what I expected, 
That's a bonus on your end. Yeah. Right. Other than that, it's like, pff, is what it is. Yeah. You like to get fucking fucked over. <laughs> That's. You think I should see a therapist? I think I should. Maybe. Maybe. I think I should. But I mean, you're aware of the problem, which is good. I think you should just work on it. Yeah. There, there's always little instances where you can like, you know, it's like a like working out. Like those, yeah, those situations where if it's somebody's just, infringing a little bit and it bothers you, then just say it. Just say that it bothers you. Sometimes in the moment. I, I do overanalyze things, I think. I think I overanalyze things to the point where I give people an out a little too much. And I think I empathize with people a little too much. And I think that kind of maybe gets me in this weird dialogue where I'm like, oh, well, maybe, you know. Yeah. I don't think empathy is a problem. I think empathy becomes an issue when it it starts to affect your life in a negative way. Yeah. Right? Empathy is something that you should be able to use to understand somebody's situation so you guys can meet on a common ground. Mm -hmm. Right? But when when that relationship starts taking from you and it's just a, it's this give, give, give and take, 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 then there's nothing that happens. That's yeah. not empathy either. It's just like a disguise for you not wanting to say something, you know? That's true. Yeah. It's not, not real. You know, I'm going to start telling people to fuck off more. I should start doing that. Okay, well, let's just... Is know, that let's, a good let's, start? Let's, let's let's go somewhere in between there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go zero to 100. Right middle, right yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think the way I drive sometimes and the way like I get road rage, I think I should try to, I think I should try to do that in everyday instances. You should just practice being more honest about what you're actually thinking. You know, I, no, I'm, I'm actually, I do actually try to do that. And I actually try to tell people like, look, dude, like this is where I stand. This is how I feel about certain things. And I try to leave and I try to be as honest as possible with certain people. Actually with most people, I try to be as honest. Cause you and I, I have the opposite problem. I say my opinion when it's not needed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? and I tend yeah. to hurt feelings a lot. I can't. I, I, I reserve <laughs> I a, my opinion a little. I need bit. a little bit of your thing and just <laughs> yeah, pull yeah. it back. It's like I'll walk into a room. That's why we're great with each other. Well, look at that blouse. Ugly, huh? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> hey, so um, <laughs> today's blouse. sermon is going to start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a youth minister. <laughs> yeah, I'm a youth minister. <laughs> it's like, well, did in you? this in this scenario, he's <laughs> he's a minister. He came out. Did you do your makeup with your knuckles today? Amazing. <laughs> well, the <laughs> Lord says. <laughs> so Turn today we're going to learn about empathy <laughs> and time and place. <laughs> <laughs> Psalms 32. Psalms 32. Mm. Yeah, everyone has their thing. I mean, everyone's got their thing to work on. It's interesting when I hear you guys say that stuff because I think I think you're right. Yeah, I mean, it's just an observation. Shut the fuck up, dude. See? I'm fine. Whoa, I got whoa. it. See? Whoa. Boom. Whoa. Yeah, let's go somewhere in between that. Huh? Yeah. I'm, heal I'm healed, baby. Let's go somewhere Eww, in between. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I'll probably just jump off a bridge or something. So what are you That's guys going to do there today? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> On this fine Friday night. You're literally one of the nicest people I ever met in my life. I appreciate you are really that. Nice. Thank you. I appreciate You're that. You're too nice, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe I should not be as nice as I should be. Well, you just need to have teeth in the right situation. Yeah, you know like, what? It's I think, okay. It's I think okay you, to say what the fuck is. You up. know what's crazy? Sometimes when I do get like really upset and I actually speak out on certain things, everybody looks at me like, "What the fuck?" You know, because sometimes I do. Well, it, that's because you already put yourself in a subservient position constantly, so yeah. that they they expect that to be the norm. Mm -hmm. So you know, people are just walking over you all the time, and the reason why sometimes people like you might be because they are walking Ooh. over you. So you are playing right. that position that they prefer oh, in their life. Shit. Yo, so, this is what I needed to yeah. hear today. So they go, boy. well, <laughs> well, hey, you're under my thumb and I only like you when you're here. But when you speak up for yourself and you're not under their thumb anymore, they go, oh, now you're being an asshole. But it's mm -hmm. really just, I'm just speaking my mind and I don't like the way that you're treating me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's wow. true. That's actually, you know what? And also if you don't Hey bro, do you live in my house, dog? Hey man. Hey, you live in my fucking hey, house, bro? Hey man. Hey man. Hey man, what can I say? Hey, hey bro, do you know me or something? Also, does this guy fucking know who I am? Hey. What am I saying? Dude, if, <laughs> <laughs> what am I saying? Yeah, what am I saying? <laughs> when Tiff hears this, bro, she's gonna be like, thank you, David. That's what she's gonna say. It's true though, honestly. And two, if you if you don't speak up, I'm gonna start socking you, That's why dude. you blow up in the fucking car because you you don't have any help. I, I, you I, don't release it when the time's right and you just and we've actually talked about this. It builds shit too. up and we, then you blow up on somebody. We've had a lot of conversations. Inappropriate. Yeah, we've had a lot of conversations about the same shit where we talk about how we need to like release in certain positions and certain like situations. And I feel like I do the latter. I kind of hold it in a little bit mm -hmm. and then I'm like, you know, whatever. Like I, I kind of turn the other cheek, but it comes out. It, it comes does. out either way. Cause I mean, I mean, what's the whole point of like, you get confronted by somebody that pisses you off and you go, ah, whatever. He's an empathy today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, dude, I, I'm going to talk like that. I, I'm going to be empathetic. Oh, he spit in my mouth. Oh, COVID. It's okay. Empathy, empathy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right? And then you walk outside, right, bro. Okay, and this, and this okay. fucking ladybug lands on your nose, and you're like, "You fucking bitch!" <laughs> you know, fucking ladybug. What's the point of that? <laughs> you know, you gotta. It doesn't make any sense. Like, you gotta, 
you got to make sure that your anger goes in the right way. Like, right. Yeah, fucking that. red and that. black ladybug? What the fuck? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but over here, yeah, fucking, oh, empathy, it's like speed in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Speed in my mouth. You think somebody would spit in my mouth and I would not do anything about it? I think it? you'd be mm-hmm. like, okay. And yeah, you'd yeah. walk that way. Yeah. I think that's exactly what you would do. <laughs> okay. Well, all right then. Yeah, I respect me, right? it. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I, I know I had an instance too where I blew up recently on a Karen, and I didn't, and I felt like it's, tell us the story in person. I told you the story, but it was I was so I was before I got this office, 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 office. Before I got this office, I was going to go back to Little Armenia, Glendale, and because it was a nice office that was about this price, but it's like three times the size. The reason why I chose not to get it because an office three times the size, I would have to fill it out. What's the whole point? Like mm-hmm. this office is perfectly fine. Right. And then uh, when I when I before I walked into the office, there was a lady. I was on my phone. I looked up. She wasn't backing out, and I went forward, and she started backing out. She almost hits me. I'm like, oh, cool, whatever. And I look at my phone, turn it off. I start walking, and she goes, she goes, you should probably look up when you're on your phone. There's people driving here. Oh. And you know, this is during a time. Where the where the kung flu the COVID shit was happening mm-hmm. shit. and I I was on mm-hmm. edge I was not having it and so I looked at her and I was like you're in the car I'm a pedestrian you're supposed to watch out for my safety you weren't coming out so I walked I wasn't I was aware that you were there yeah. right you, she goes I have the right away right and she goes okay and she rolls her eyes and I was like what the fuck I was like. You're in the fucking car. She goes, do you I, – I, she's like, apparently you don't know road rules. I was like, the fuck you say to me, bitch? I went off. Like, I went red. Yeah. And I literally – you're so wrong. Yeah, and I was like – 100% wrong. And I literally looked at it. I was like, you dumb fucking bitch. I was like, so so this is what it is. That's what I need. I was like, you dumb fucking bitch. So if you're in the middle of the fucking road, right, you drive off. You hit somebody else. Is it the other car's fault for being there? I was like, you have to watch. You're the one going into the other lane. Yeah. Same situation here. When you're backing out, you have to look at the pedestrian that's coming out and walking. Yeah. You're at fault. Shut the fuck up. Right. And so I literally just start screaming. She goes, okay, whatever. She starts laughing. I'm like, cool. So I just stood right behind her car and I was like, I got about 30 minutes before I have to meet this guy. So I'm standing right here. <laughs> and then she just starts blazing her music. She goes, you have to move. Rolls up the window, starts blazing her music. I'm like- What was she listening to? I don't fucking remember. But I was, I just stood there. <laughs> Nickelback. Yeah, <laughs> Nickelback. <laughs> she was listening to Creed. Never met it as a weapon. <laughs> it was actually Creed, guys. <laughs> well, I just heard. No, but- <laughs> you dare me. She puts no. on some fucking Smash Mouth and was like, Damn. "Joke's on you, brother." Yeah. Turn it up. She was listening to Tupac. That's why I <laughs> fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. No. <laughs> so I stood there for not thirty minutes, but it was like a good maybe like ten minutes or some shit like that. Wow. Very That's petty. Yeah, and I just yeah. waited, and she just coming. You have to move. I was like, I don't gotta go anywhere. You could run me over if you like. And I just waited and waited and waited. Wow. Just so I, just because I knew that she, the only way she was leaving is she ran me over. And if she ran me over, I'll hear the phone footage. <laughs> so, That's tight. And all I did, and I just, when I just finally decided to move, I fucking pressed my middle finger up on her window <laughs> as she was turning out. <laughs> and then she drove off. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I just, sometimes, I just got, sometimes you got to do that, you know? Yeah. Some people deserve it, honestly. I just got tired of that shit. It's just like, that was like the second, like, white lady that just decided that she could just say whatever the fuck to me. And mm-hmm. it's, it's because of that COVID thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right when that COVID situation happened, it was like green light on Asian people. Yeah, for and real. And I'm like, hmm, I thought y'all were really cool. What the fuck? So whatever that was inside them this whole time, mm. it just leaked all the fuck it just out. came out. That, yeah. that happened to uh, my buddy Kenny. He was at the supermarket. Oh, not Kenny. Yeah, I know. I know. Not <laughs> we, we've, Kenny, we've talked. We've talked Ooh. the legend of Kenny uh, on this podcast. I've seen before. Kenny beat Kenny up children the, for no reason. He's yep. got the darkness in him. Got, he, that he's boy. That. I need a little bit of Kenny. Dude. Yes, I always you do. Darkness I always tell Kenny, I'm like, man, Kenny, I need. A, I need some of you and me. Kenny has darkness like that. There it is. Ooh, like that there boy, it is. come on, coming out. Want to be Pause the it. first? Want to be the first? Ooh. Anyway, so he was at a supermarket, and this white dude, some older white gentleman, they were in line to check out at like a Ralph's or something, and he and I guess he was like. He said something under his breath, like, oh, yeah, like, get this guy with COVID away from me. I don't want COVID, blah, 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 to Kenny. To Kenny? And then Kenny was like. The worst decision. Yeah. And then Kenny was like, fuck you, you fat fuck. Like, what? The-? He's like, are you talking to me that way? Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Do- I don't have COVID, motherfucker. Like, what are you talking about? And then the- everyone was like, sir, please, like, stop. And they had to separate him. So they put him in two different lines. And then he was still talking shit to the guy from- in the other line. <laughs> Kenny was like. He's like, heart disease is going to kill you before COVID ever will, you fat fuck. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. And he's like screaming at him. And then the, the, the guy that worked there was like, sir, please stop. Like, he's not t- saying anything to you anymore. Like, just, just leave him alone. Uh, and I you was can't, like, that's why I don't understand when people talk shit. It's like, 
You better be I'm ready not, to yeah, back exactly. that shit I'm up. Not, I don't talk shit to anybody unless it's I'm ready to like go all the way. Because yeah. you never know who yeah. the fuck you're talking shit to. This yeah. dude could just start swinging at you. You don't mm-hmm. know. Like I don't get out of line unless it's very, you know what I mean? Not At least not in a disrespectful way yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. that guy was like, hey, do you mind keeping your distance? Who knows how Kenny would have reacted to that? You know, maybe you would have still got pissed. Who the fuck knows? But I mean, yeah. at least that's a not like, get your, what do you say? Get your COVID ass? What, what do you yeah, say? he was like, he's like, I forgot actually what he said. He said something about how he has COVID or something like that. To get away yeah, from, yeah, get away yeah. from his COVID. I mean, stuff. like right there when you said that, what did you think was going to happen? Right? Yeah, right. Like, what did you think you was going to? And Kenny's not a. He's like my size. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just fit. Yeah, he, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's a tall dude and a killer. And then yeah. he was at, he was at his. Uh, he lives in a complex, something like that. And I guess he was uh, wearing his mask and he was uh, on the treadmill. And the guy next to him, I guess, was was probably like two treadmills away. And then Kenny, I guess, he like coughed in his mask or something like that and he goes the guy was like what the fuck is that a covid cough and he goes this is a marijuana cough sir <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes back on to on the tremble he's like yeah i just uh, fucking tuned him out i was like wow that's all he got huh wow i was like that's because he already blew off steam at the other yeah, person yeah, 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 so yeah, he yeah. was already kind of chill on the dude at ralph's yeah, yeah. dude yeah Kenny's- i got a shit on the guy at ralph's that's what it is mm-hmm. yeah just a random well, want to just speak your mind i think you just need to speak your mind yeah, you know what? The, yeah, you're right. In those situations where you feel like I'm being fucked with, like just honestly, you don't even have to get crazy and blow the fuck up. Yeah. Just say what the fuck is on your mind. Man, Kenny's story is way cooler than mine because I attacked the lady and, <laughs> and he attacked the grown man. No, but she deserved <laughs> she deserved that though. Because and you didn't do anything to her. Oh, you, absolutely. You not. weren't like me, like, I'm gonna fucking beat the shit out of you, bitch. Like you weren't doing anything like that. Cause that yeah. would have been crazy. That would have been a little much. Like, all right, David, we're like a racist know? bitch. Yeah, but at the same time, like what she got was what she deserved. Oh, because for sure. She probably would have done the same shit to you. She probably would have stood behind your car. What I want to do was fucking slash her fucking tires. You got her her plates, right? You got her VIN number? I remember a while ago. I was like- Some nails in her tires. 18 at the time. And this is when like my we first started driving. One of my buddies had a car. And we went to Rite Aid. And there was a situation where she was a Karen. She was, we were like here. I love that. In the the car. Uh, And there was like a a mix up about like who, you know how when you're on the sidewalk and you're like, who moves left, right, or whatever the fuck. So it was like, we didn't know who was going. And then somehow her and my buddy got into words, right? And she, she said some shit like, watch where the fuck you're going, blah, blah, blah. They started getting heated, right? So my buddy gets out of the car and like, she gets in his face like, you motherfucking piece of shit, blah, like in his face. And he's like, whoa, shit. And so I start talking shit to her out of the backseat of the car. Like, fuck you, bitch. Like I just start because she's yeah. talking shit to the homie, right? All my Xbox live shit talking training. Like I was, just, <laughs> I was just ready. Like you stupid fucking old bitch fart. You fart dust, right? I'm just saying whatever the fuck. You fart dust. Mind. And fart she like dust. leans in the like, back. <gasps> she's like, what? And I, uh, she's like, you skinny motherfucker. She starts going off on me, right? And so we're like having this battle. And uh, the way it ended, she was like in her late 50s, early 60s. And I, I was like, shut up, you old bitch. You look like you got a dick, right? That's what I told her. And I was like, this old lady is Burn. not ready for that yeah. kind of level of immaturity. Yeah. Level. <laughs> I was like, level. I got her. Checkmate. Yeah. And then she looked at me and she's like, yeah, I do. And I'm going to fuck you in the ass with it. <laughs> 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 we oh were like heated and when she said that i was like oh and i just started and she just turned around and walked away didn't even give me a chance to rebuttal uh-huh. i just started dying i was like oh well fuck i, I mean she got me dude Damn, you, i didn't know you ran that. after she's like what so that was that yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, she can't stand with, in my place later tonight i literally yeah. went oh fuck, i'm fucked but like she judoed my because i was like i got i, I thought yeah, i yeah. hit her with it like shut up you old bitch you got a dick and she's like, yeah, I do, so I can fuck you in the ass with it. And then she's like, oh, like, oh shit. And then walks off with a little Rite Aid bag. I'll that's like, the oh. one hit her quitter, bro. Yeah, I think about her from time to time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's the one that got away. Damn. She's the one that got, she's got the away. One that got away. She would have buried her in a heater, heartbeat, dude. dude. She hit me with a heater. I mean, you got to eat. That's high right. level, boy. When you lose, you, you know, you just got to be real. You got to all time in fall when the leaves were falling. I thought about that woman in the parking lot. What she told me. I would fuck your mom. <laughs> this is <what> I <laughs> a dick I fucked She's your mom. She's a formidable <laughs> opponent. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That's she, a she was ready. Where, where was this at? In South Pasadena. At oh, fire, in a parking lot, right? Yeah, that's hilarious. Dude. She, it was, she was. Some ready people for just it. say shit and they're not ready for it. When I when I moved here, and mind you, I was you know not a very scary looking dude. So like I, uh, you know, in the IKEA in Burbank, the original one, it was such a bitch to get stuff loaded up because you just have that small little parking lot where you can you yeah. know load your shit up, and so. There was a parking spot that I clearly had guy went around me and he t- just took the spot. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, excuse me. It's like, yo, you can't do that. I was going to park here, right? He was like, oh, are you going to come out to help me load my stuff? And I, wow. Yeah, yeah, Fucking right. 
the fucking rage that came out of me. And I literally got out and I had like that little, you know, Ikea hammer set that I bought. Literally oh. went to the hammer. I went to his fucking headlight. And the guy was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, get the fuck out the spot right now. I'm going to bust your fucking shit. I mean, this guy, he's a big guy. He was yoked. I thought he was ready to fight. Yeah. I actually had that hammer because I, I was scared of him because he was huge. Yeah. So I was like, I got to use his hammer and I got to spike his fucking, his fucking skull open. So I was thinking like, <laughs> yeah. He's a big fucking dude. You know? <laughs> I got to murder this fucking dude. I, I got to murder this right guy. That's the right mindset to yeah. go into. Yeah, because I know like I that. know how unformidable I am compared to this yoked ass fucking giant. Right. So like, you got to yeah, bring hammer. your A game, baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah so hammer. I had that. And everybody knows that David's specialty is weapons. I have. Talk to the kid. Yeah, talk to the kid that got stabbed. Um, talk to that big it's group of people. It's the equalizer. So yeah. what I always tell people to, I, I think people don't understand like how impoverished I grew up. So it's like, I was scared a lot of the times. It's like, oh shit, like I'm not a scary looking dude. But that's the thing. It's like, you've been in those positions before where you have to do I don't have, listen, like when, you, when you come into a situation where I, I'm talking shit to somebody that fucked me over, I'm not thinking like, oh, we're going to have some words and we're going to walk away. Yeah, it's all it's all in. No, it's like, no, yeah. I bet you this guy would kill me if he wanted to. But mm -hmm. if you're going to try to fucking kill me, I'm going to hammer your fucking face open. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, really, I thought he was about it. And then he was like, oh, whoa, whoa, what the fuck are you doing? Right? And I'm like, I'm going to bust your fucking shit. Then I'm going to bust you in the fucking face after. Right? <laughs> and so I was enraged and the guy just backed his shit out. But nice. it's like. Why the fuck would you do that to me? Why would we? Yeah. Why yeah. would you make? Why would you want to escalate this? To, it's to that the situation? joke that he made that made me feel so small. It was like, oh, I guess you're gonna come out and help yeah. me move my stuff, and I'm like, but you know <laughs> that you fuck? took my shit, yeah. motherfucker. And it's a tiny little hammer too. But all I was thinking is like, I'm gonna bust his fucking tail lights out, and I'm gonna fucking crack him in the head. That's all yeah. you need, bro. Yeah. That's all well, you it's need. also just that what for a lot of people like they just say shit, but when they see someone that's really about it, it's like a yeah. lot of people are. Was not he a about white guy? Of course, <laughs> he's a big old white dude. He was yoked though. Like, yeah. if, honestly, if he wanted to fuck me up, he probably could have. Yeah. Which I was kind of shocked that he backed down so fast. But for a lot of that's what I'm saying. For a lot of people, it's like, especially I worth think for like big yeah. old dudes sometimes like that. It's like they get away with just intimidating people so fast that mm -hmm. like when someone is down and they look how they look, they're like, ah, fuck. Especially you know? with like I had a fucking white Camry at the time. Yeah, I had my little fucking black plastic glasses. Yeah. So I was like fucking. I would have done the same thing to you too. Yep, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Sometimes when I go back and I look at my photos, I'm like, no wonder you were bullied, dude. I would have bullied you. <laughs> I want to build a time machine just so I can go back as a kid and then steal my own lunch money. <laughs> Give me that shit, you fucking loser. <laughs> Tough it up! <laughs> You're like, oh shit, ever since that when, day. When I was a kid, I remember there was a guy. That was, <laughs> it was giant Korean, man. It was me, motherfucker. I don't, I don't know about that shit. I don't understand why people want to take it there. And they the, the most annoying thing is when they start something and they go, what? why are you being such an asshole? It's oh, like, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. That's, dude, that's, like, that's, that's a power that's dynamic thing, huh? Do you think that's what it is? It's like, like they, they the feel like they're better than you? Or they feel like... They can get away with shit because you won't do anything. Because did you see the video clip? I have plenty of experience of with this, by the way. The, um, the, so basically, this lady, we'll, we'll call her Karen, of course. Karen cut this dude off and he confronted her. He was like, what the fuck? Why did you? And she just starts freaking out. She goes, don't hit me. No, I'm so scared. Please, somebody save me. But everybody watched what she did when she flipped them off. And they're like, no, yeah, you, you exactly. provoked him. So yeah. what the fuck? But she was... She was basically what she was doing is she sees this black guy and she knows that if she cause if she's the old white lady, she's gonna cause a scene. Like Amy Cooper. Yeah, she's trying to get this yeah. black dude killed. Right. You know, same same thing with that lady, Amy Cooper. She saw the guy, she goes, You're trying, you're gonna assault me, you're gonna hurt me. Cause she knows what she's doing. Yeah. Right. You exactly. Know? And that's that's the biggest problem there is yeah. the fact that she's able to kind of go into this character and you know, if we weren't in the 20th century, 21st, well, 21st century, and we didn't have fucking phones and cameras to record this, yeah, it's his word There's, against hers, well, it's, it's, and we all know how that goes. Because it's yeah, a problem right. that's layered, right? Number one, it's it's a representation of, one, this lady knows what she's doing, and she knows that she can get away with it. Yeah. And number two, it's a reflection of the views of the police force and this country, because you know for a fact that that video wasn't there. Yeah. You, you know probably would have been side with. Up, yeah. You know she's going to side with. Yeah. Exactly. So it's a reflection of two things, and it's happened on multiple occasions. Yeah. So people can't deny that within this police force, there's something fucking wrong here. Like something's oh, yeah. not making sense. Like yeah, the yeah. Uh, the video you were telling me about, but the kid that was an RA for this university, That's and he's right. picking up trash outside, and the cop comes up to him and is just like badgering him, right? And oh, he's yeah. asking like, oh, and it's it, terrible. Mm -hmm. And it's just like. That. Dude, he's telling you. Where he's like a he's like a dorm RA, or he lives in that uh, that student complex or whatever. And then he 
he's picking up trash, putting it into the bucket, and he fucking works there, and he lives there. And the cop's like, hey, so I heard there's somebody loitering out here or whatever, and uh, do you live here? He goes, yeah. He tells him the address. He goes, well, what's your room? He goes, I actually don't have to tell you that. Yeah. I'm working right now. And he goes like, well, you're threatening me with a metal object. Bro, that was the worst yeah, he's part. Like, he's like, I'm fuck? feeling threatened by that. Put it down. I was like, what are you talking about? He's bro? like, you have a fucking up, gun, dude. Picking up trash. Mm-hmm. Dude. You have a gun. You have a stun gun. You have a baton. You have handcuffs. You have all these other weapons. Yeah. And, and I'm just picking up trash. He, what's it called? He resigned like a couple days later or some shit like that. It's like, no, he should have been fired. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and it's also like, when you when you watch that video, it's like, people in the comments were like, well, he should have been so mad. Like, he should have like told him where he lived. Like people were saying shit like that. But it's also like he's being approached aggressively. Exactly. Like, right. wouldn't you be fucking pissed? Yeah. yeah. Imagine if you fucking you actually have a reason to be somewhere. You work there. You fucking live there, and someone is testing you. Getting harassed by anybody. Yeah. Is yeah. Like, what you wouldn't fuck? be mad. Like, what the fuck? And here's I'm the biggest chilling. problem too. So when that video went down, you see all these cops. He's yelling. He's like, "I'm working here. I live here." Blah blah blah. He's like, "Put the metal." He kept on saying "metal object" because he knew what he was yes, doing. Yes, exactly. Because he wasn't going to say the 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 trash picker upper because it would make him sound foolish. Yeah. I feel threatened by that. Oh, really, dude? Exactly. And then after this whole thing, what gets diffused? It gets diffused because the administrator comes in. He goes, "I'm his administrator," and he actually works there. He goes, oh, "Okay." Doesn't check his ID. Doesn't see if he if he actually does work there. It could have been some random old white guy. Yeah, but. Does doesn't want to see verification from him. Yep. It's like, how My boy was up? out of breath, though, when he pulled up. He was like, yeah, yeah. he works here. He's an RA. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's fine. He works. Yeah, he lives here. He, yeah. He's like breathing heavily the whole time. That was my favorite part. And it's my so funny, too, because he comes up. He goes, and the, and, the, and the cop is trying to justify the situation. He goes, yeah, so I verified it. You're okay. He tried to be all calm. And, he goes, and then okay, you know, the guy was, he goes, oh, okay. So we're okay now? So everything's fine? He goes, he goes, hey, hey, buddy. He's like, do you want to do you want to go back or do you want to continue this? He goes, oh, continue what? He goes, hey. he goes, well, you had a metal object in your hand. He goes, what is it? What's it for? What's it for? <laughs> right? He's like, literally, he goes, yeah. he's like, you're escalating the situation. He goes, what? What are you going to do? It's like, clearly I'm not wrong. What's this metal object for? You know what it's for. Right. And he can't say anything. It's right, like, right. he's like, this is a bucket. That was my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bucket. <laughs> like, if he's trying to rob something, right? The worst, a white bucket. A bucket. Yeah. <laughs> This is where I put my stolen goods. I know. He's like, what did you steal? I stole seven goldfish. (laughs) (laughs) I stole seven goldfish. At the carnival down the street. And a bunch of marine rocks. Did you see the one (laughs) where uh, it was like a, like, like a WeWork or something like that, right? Like, Mm -hmm. what do you call Like, like, what was the old office that you had? Uh, Cross campus. Cross campus. It's like something like that where everyone pays rent to get into the spot and they rent out offices where they have their businesses, whatever, that's their headquarters. And there was this one white dude and... He was like asking these three black dudes, like, why are you guys here? How'd you guys get in here? Do you work here? Do you have an office here? Like, why are you even here? And they're like, we can't get into the fucking building mm-hmm. unless we have a key. Yeah. So we're here for a fucking reason, dude. We pay rent like everybody else. And he was like, nope. Like, I don't believe you. And he was giving these guys such a fucking hard time. And it's just so like, <laughs> like, why, that man? Fucked up? Like, why, dude? Yeah. It's like, you know, you know how to walk in this building. You can't, whenever you go into a building like that, you you don't just walk in. Yeah, you know what's up. Yeah. You need a check-in. You need a fucking key. You need something. There's so many problems Ugh. with the, the whole system. I, I think, I don't think it needs to be completely defunded and like abolished, but they definitely need to revamp the need, shit out of that system. Yeah. And also yeah. there need to be like, these dudes need to, you got to like, uh, when I was listening to Jocko Willink, he, he made he a lot had of the good best points. Take. He had the best He's take. like, you should take these guys out of the field, psychologically evaluate them, train them on how to de-escalate situations. It's, you should have a lot. Yeah. It should be hard to be a cop. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It should not be easy. Nope. Like you should have like creme de la creme people because it's it it's taxing on you in a multiple ways. One, psychologically, just going out there thinking like I could get shot today, that's fucking taxing, right? Yeah, on you, yeah. whether you like, whether you're the strongest human or not, that's gonna fucking wear on you over time. Uh, two, um, just having power yeah. in general yeah. is that's hard. That's like a hard thing to deal with. Mm-hmm. So like these motherfuckers need to be like tip top, dude. Like yeah. and, and any fuckery, like anything, like that out. harassing shit, you're out, out dude. dude. Gone. Out. You out. are no yeah. longer. Out. You can't fuck that. You can't. We can't have any instances of bullshit. And, and that's the problem too. Is like. Even with when you take the the police training from a standpoint, right? Like just looking at just the training alone. Like I've tr- I've trained with a lot of cops. I've coached a lot of cops, and it's a it's a very mixed bag, you know. Yeah. Like you, we get a lot of guys. Like we had one guy start training with us because he had an incident out in the field. Someone reached for his gun, and then he was like, "I got up," and he couldn't really stop him. He needed to learn how to do jujitsu. He had to learn how to do all this stuff, and he started training, which is which is great for him like it's i'm glad that he took that first step to do it 
because this shit is not a game, bro. When you're when you're playing with your life and you're not ready to be in those situations, you're not ready to be wrestling and 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 having someone on top of you trying to fucking beat the shit out of you or trying to kill you. If you're not ready to handle that with just the skill alone, then you have no reason to be out there. And when you watch certain videos of cops like like handling certain situations, you could tell that especially if it's a specific combat situation, like mm-hmm. when they're wrestling and they're and they're and they're they're going getting after each other, you could tell when somebody is very unprepared, when they don't they shouldn't be in that position because they're not ready to be in that position. It's it's like it's like imagine if I'm training somebody and like their third week of training, let's say their sixth month of training, they're like, oh, I want to fight. Right. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, if I say, all right, go fight, go fucking get punched in the face, and they're not seeing that on a regular basis, even after six months of hard training, they're still probably not going to be that ready. Yeah. You know, and that's plain and simple. And it's not, yeah, it's a fight situation, but it's not far off from what you're doing when you're restraining people and you're having to control somebody else's body yeah. while they're resisting and you have four other people with you. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it, you could see those same situations and you could tell that from a coach's eye, it's like, oh, this guy is not ready. He's not prepared. Yeah. You know, like, and how can you be prepared in all those crazy situations that cops have to deal with? Because they deal with crazy shit that we couldn't even fathom. Yeah. But at the same time, they're going into those situations and they're still not being trained enough. Yeah. You know, like I've trained, like I've trained some cops that some are or like brown belts and some of them are blue belts and they 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 do really well right and they don't they know just enough to be able to restrain somebody and 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 be able to control somebody else but then i've gotten some other people who are like in the field and they're cops and they don't know anything mhm and you know it's on an even playing ground playing well, field people, getting- when, when they get surprised like for example there was uh one of the Gracie guys he he's he's uh, in the corner of Brian Ortega uh Henner so Henry Gracie, right? So he does those, you know, jujitsu breakdowns, yeah. right? That feels so extra with that shit too, by the way. Yeah. Okay, guys. So what we're gonna see in this video. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're like, we get it, dude. You're in a tutorial. Kind of calm down before yeah. I choke you out. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like you're very likable in general, and you don't. Yeah. Have to do you this. seem like a really yeah. nice guy, but yeah, tone yeah. down a bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh great. my god, guys! Don't we go hot? Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like shit, dude. But um, <laughs> so I got this one, and that turns inside out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll protect sure you. And I'm like, I, I appreciate it, but you know, I was like, Henry. Relax. It's just a it's all good. It's all good. It's just a hoodie. But um, yeah, I like the guy. But Henner does these, you know, these breakdown videos, and then I saw this real, really interesting one where uh, a cop is clearly cl- clearly trained in jujitsu, and he starts controlling the 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 assailant, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But people watch that; they're like, "Oh, that's really cool." But that should be the norm, exactly. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you see how like less violent it can be. Yeah, obviously not in all situations, but how less violent it can be when somebody is trained and they're ready to be able to handle that situation. One cop. Exactly. Well, and also think about like, think about how before you were training the fights you got into, yeah. like the, the the way like just emotionally yeah. and psychologically, you're like, fuck, 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 fuck. Uh-huh. Now imagine you also have a gun and a baton yeah. and now you feel like, ah, as opposed to- Yeah, you, what's going to happen? If you're exactly. trained and you've been fucking sparring, you, you're at least somewhat comfortable. Yes. Because you have to physical put yourself, situations. You have to put yourself in the fire all the time. Emotionally, and, psychologically, exactly, and physically. Exactly, exactly. Like the other day, yesterday, I haven't rolled and done jiu-jitsu in maybe like two weeks. And I, we roll pretty frequently. And these are all guys that we've been training with for years. And, and I was training with my buddy Gabe. Big dude. Strong guy. And recently I told him, I was like, look, dude, like I, could, I realized that he was kind of taking it easy on me because he's a lot bigger guy. And I was uh-huh. like, dude, fuck me up, bro. Like put your weight on me. Use your strength. Like give me some work, you know? Yeah. And... I told that to him two weeks ago and I rolled with him again. Completely regret telling him that because it's <laughs> substantially way harder. And when you, and I, I train a lot. And a lot of times when I train with them, like we, we like it's, it's an even role, you know, like uh-huh. usually I get more dominant positions. I don't sub the guy, but it's like, I get more dominant positions, but it's like when I roll with him, you never know whose day it is. Right. Yeah. And yesterday I was rolling with this dude. He was on top of me and just putting all his weight on me. Dog, I thought I almost had a fucking panic attack, dog. Yeah. I almost had a fucking panic. And this is a safe, controlled setting. Yeah. But it's like when you feel a dude's weight and you're tired and you know like, oh, shit, I got two more minutes on this round. And this dude's on top of me, like giving me his all. And I'm feeling that. And I feel like I have nothing to give back. That's a fucking scary situation. And if you're not, if you're not used to that feeling and you get put in that position for the first time in your life, 
That's a bad a, spot to be in, dude. Like, there's definitely like these situations too where you know you go through these cop scenarios, right? And you know, I've spoken to police officers, and I know that all of them told. I don't know the exact hours that they told me, but the amount of training that they have in terms of like t- training people to be in those physical situations is the biggest pile of bullshit I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, it's like these supposed scenarios that might happen, but you're actually not doing it to somebody who's struggling, that's fighting, that's giving it their all. They're all, all right? yes, yes. They're not. So if you don't know what it feels, by the way, if you guys have never tried to grapple or do anything for at least 15 seconds, you have no idea how exhausting <clears throat> it is. Exactly. It's yeah. tiring yeah. as fuck, especially when somebody is frantic or they're on drugs. Yeah. You really have to be on your A. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes, yes, I, yes. Yeah. You have to be in shape. You have to be doing your conditioning. You have to be doing your strength training. You have oh, to yeah. be, you have to be drilling techniques. You have to be doing all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Because if, it's at the end of the day, like Tim Kennedy has this great documentary on YouTube where he trains civilians and he trains um, uh, people, the first responders, like police officers, sheriffs, things like mm-hmm. that. And he's training these guys and he's putting them, putting them through tough situations. And he talks about this. He's like, it's not the one training session you miss. It's the years of training that you didn't do the days and the months the, of all the accumulated training that you didn't do. And when you get put on a position where your life is at stake, it's it's all for nothing because you didn't put in the time because skills are not built in just two hour session. Yeah, right. It's years and months, and unfortunately, that's the way things are. And if you're not training on a constant, if you're not training on a regular basis, you're just probably not going to be ready for the field. And yeah. when you hear guys like Jocko Wilnick or guys like Tim Kennedy, guys who have been to the highest level of those situations of like law, like I guess law enforcement and. and in a grand military, scheme of things, yeah. yeah. It's like, these guys know what works at the highest level. So we should be listening to guys like this because they do it every single day. They've made their careers and their lives on it. And they know that training jiu-jitsu and training on a regular basis, going to the shooting ranges, getting those rounds off, and and, and well, learning how to de-es- de-escalate and going through those situations on a regular basis is essential for their job and they they probably need to do that. Also think psychologically how how if you like say you're comfortable with jujitsu and grappling and stuff, yeah. how easier it would be for you to de-escalate a situation where you could just talk. Exactly. Like if you're not worried about it. You know, like if it gets there, yes. I can handle myself. Mm-hmm. I can now approach this with like a little humur, a little like, hey, what's going on, dude? Even yeah, if the guy gets stand up you're in between. Secure, you know, a little exactly. hit him with a type five, uh, bang, yeah. bang, got you chuckling. Hey, you're under arrest. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, God, that was hilarious. I don't mind. You know, that'd be fucking funny. No, but you, you could you can come in and and not be even if the guy starts being disrespectful to you. You don't, you know like if it really gets there, I can take it. like I'll be okay, and I and, have my part. But, but then again, you are. That's 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 best case scenario type cop, right? There are there are uh, there's the issue of there's a lot of shitheads in the forest too that just yeah. want to bully motherfuckers and yeah. that you got to get rid of those guys 100%. Yeah, I just yeah. think like the the things that are I mean, I haven't obviously seen a spreadsheet of where the funding goes, right? Yeah. But if there is an absorbent amount of money for the police force, I don't, I don't think it's a defunding issue. It's an allocation issue, yeah. right? It's yeah. like, where's this money going to? Yeah. Is it going into their mental health? Is it going into their training? First of all, first the first thing you need to do, like you said, is assess all these cops that are that are in these departments. See, take a look at their track record. Yeah. If they have multiple cases where people have reported like racist issues where they beat the shit out of somebody, like Derek Ch- Chauvin, whatever his fucking name exactly. Is. The guy that, that, that gone, killed George gone. Floyd. You're Instant. done. Instant. You're yeah, right. it's like it. we Done. looked at your record. Why don't you explain the situation? And that's a problem, dude. There's also also like are you saying all- allocating resources? Like t- cops don't need fucking tanks, exactly. And shit, you know, T- take the tank money and invest it in schools. Yeah, yeah. Put, put them get a smaller tank. Yeah, or, or <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't need fucking like you know what I mean. Bazoo yeah. RPGs. Who are well, you fucking killing? Like what? You I know? spoke about this on another podcast too, where we're talking about how you know these cops aren't really taught. And the reason why I want to bring a cop and ask them is this, is because I've heard this from other cops. It's like they don't really talk about de-escalation. Yeah, they they're actually they're 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 taught escalation tactics. It's they're like, trying to catch you on something. Exactly, they're trying to catch you so on a technicality. That's an escalation right. tactic. You're not trying to bring the situation down. Right. Specifically, with that guy in the parking lot yep. who was drunk, that was yep. an escalation tactic. Yeah. yeah, take this breathalyzer so I can get that number so I could throw you in jail. He's not listening to what he's saying because mm-hmm. he's worried about. But what did you drink? Exactly. What did you do? Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Right and. They could have probably gone through the right thing. Like they could have probably given it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know yeah. what the situation would would have been. What the right thing would have been. Simple. It was when he said, "Hey, my sister lives across the right right 
in the neighborhood over here. I'm going to leave my car here. I can walk home. If walking home was still a threat to the neighborhood, he's like, cool. I'm going to drive you to your sister's house. I'll take you there. If it's right around the corner, it would take them a minute. Yeah. Right. I'm going to take you there. You're not going to come out. Make sure that you don't. Stay in the area for another 10 minutes. See what's up. Yeah. Yeah. Done. It was like a right. gotcha moment. Especially yeah. when he got when he made him do the breathalyzer. Yeah. It was like, gotcha. Like you didn't and have to it, take it, him to you, the drunk tank. And you can right. kind of see like how like some situations on camera, you can kind of see like the look in some of these guys' eyes when they like cuff somebody. And like it's like a feeling of like and I already like know. the guy that got body slammed. Did you see that guy? The guy mm. that was talking about, like, oh, I went to the Western Union mm. and the guy came out of nowhere, grabbed his arm, and the guy that grabbed him, the cop that grabbed this poor dude was a big fucking guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he slammed him on the ground and put all of his weight on him. But one, he shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Right? Because it was the wrong guy. Yeah. Obviously, shouldn't have even happened. We're just having a conversation. Exactly. But if they knew a little bit of martial arts, they knew something, they could have handled that situation a lot better without slamming this poor fucking guy and breaking this guy's Dude, rib. they didn't even fucking identify him. They didn't ask for his identification. Exactly. And yeah. now that would have saved the county... Yeah. A fucking seven hundred thousand dollar lawsuit that yeah. they're facing, right? It's like, what are we doing here, man? And 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 that's just talking from like like an outside perspective of just like skill wise, yeah. right? I saw another video of this black dude, a black cop, and this this black lady, and she was like pretty big, she was pretty tall, and this white cop. The black cop is standing behind the black lady, and the black lady like started socking this dude, the white cop. Boom, mm-hmm. boom, boom. And you could tell the way that guy got hit was like he's never been punched in the face before. One, that's a problem, right? Obviously, in that situation, you're going to see hostile people. They're going to come at you. They're going to attack you, especially in, as your job. So you need to understand how to, one, be able to stay calm in that situation and not freak out. Mm-hmm. And from my point of view, it looked like a guy that's never been punched in the face. Yeah. So immediately, the situation escalates tenfold. So the guy behind the black dude was like, he socked her out. Yeah, yeah. And it was that. a reaction, right? And that's when things that's when things shouldn't happen that way. Do you think they should have been able to restrain that lady properly? Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Did she need to get knocked the fuck out and hit her head on the pavement? Because what happens when she gets knocked out? Hits her head on the pavement, she dies. That's a whole nother fucking thing, mm-hmm. right? But it's like. There has to be another way, another answer to be able to handle the situation. As soon as the dude gets socked in the head, he should have been like double leg, change levels. You know what I mean? Like that's that's one way to handle it. And that could have saved that situation from happening. Yeah. You know? And it's like- There's there's a lot of shit. There's a it's, lot it's of It's a complicated issue. But and that, obviously easy for me to say from the outside. But from the point of view of somebody that trains people in combat, that's an easy way to- to handle the situation. That's definitely part of the solution for sure. Definitely. Training that has is, to is, be it. It just seems a little too easy and convenient to be a cop yeah. when you guys don't even know how to do the basic of basic stuff. Yeah. It's like if 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 the argument is like you don't know what we go through, our life is in constant danger, then why aren't you doing the best to protect yourself? Exactly. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. exactly. That's the other side of it. That's that's the personal responsibility. Yeah. That they need to take care of themselves. And the guy that 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 did jujitsu because he he found himself in altercation, that's personal responsibility. He said, look, there's a glaring weakness in my job for me to stay safe, so I need to do this. But it should just be mandatory. Exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? But good on him for, for realizing this and, and, and taking it upon himself. Yeah, and the cop training, it. too, is way too short. It's just a little yeah, too it – You know, like I'm not – Obviously, there's no job that's the easiest to get. Yeah. But for a job with that much power and responsibility, right. yeah. there should be way more training. Like maybe – It should be Bud's training, dude. Yeah. Like the shit they put – the And like constant the, evaluation. Like yeah. Constant. Yeah. Just constant every three eva- months or so. Dude, bang, bang, what's going on? Doctors get evaluated. They have to take a test consistently for the rest of their life so they yeah. can make sure that they can operate and you know do whatever they can in their practice. They have to do this shit right. all the time. CPAs have to take their tests constantly. Yeah. Yeah. What about fucking cops, man? Yeah, right. Like your job is very dangerous. Like you said, this isn't coming from a civilian's yeah. mouth. This is what you said. Mm-hmm. You said it's high pressure, it's high stress, and we don't know what you're fucking going through. Well, guess what? Tell us. Yeah. And if that's the case, and if that's that case, then you really need these parameters to make sure that you could do your job well. Yeah. And that's, it just isn't, they're not taking personal responsibility for yeah. that shit. It's like, yeah. well, exactly. the world is, cra- and you know what's so childish too? It's like in Atlanta, when uh, Rashard Brooks was killed, um, um, uh, yes, he was killed. He was shot as he was running away. The What the Atlanta cops are like, well, well, now that, well, since you guys want to defund us, let me show you guys what it's like not to have any cops. Hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're like not taking calls. 
like when people are in trouble. They're like, well, let me show you guys what it's like not to have cops. It's like, that is the most childish. You guys are only further further in uh, proving our point of yeah. how fucking dumb you are. Yeah, These right. are people's lives at stake, dude. Exactly. Nobody's saying we don't need you. We're saying you need to do better at your job. Exactly. Yeah. Right? And everybody needs to hear that at here's, some point. Here's the fucking funniest thing. Me all They're the time. like, oh, you're going to defund the fucking police? They're like, well, good luck. It's like, how are we going to feed our families? That's funny because teachers get defunded all the fucking time and they're still working. Yeah. Yeah, right. And they're doing a great job. Mm-hmm. So what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, it's, it's just dumb. It's just yeah. a bunch of whiny people who have a lot of power that don't want to do better at this point because yeah. they're comfortable being at where they're at. They're yeah. like, well, you don't know what we go through. Fuck that excuse now. You have to do better. Exactly. Yeah, you have to. And uh, it's, there's too much power in that job for you not to be doing better. For 100%. And, uh, definitely allocating the resources back into the communities like that's 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 part of the solution too why the fact that teachers get defunded all the time is fucking banana yeah that should be the last thing that gets defunded yeah and that's where people are talking about where they should allocate this money it's like education starts first like the family starts first like when people can't feed their kids people can't make ends meet these Mm -hmm. kids aren't getting the proper education they don't have a lot of great teachers put in place for to make these kids succeed yeah right. start there man yeah we should probably start there start so there. they don't end up in a position where they're here either right yeah there's a lot of problems too where we can even go talk about the prison system so a lot of people don't know with richard brooks richard brooks was on tv not too long ago before that incident happened talking about how he's a reformed convict and that it's hard for him to get a job right which is bullshit too which yeah. is so, such bullshit so when he was running away he was worried about his future he's like look it's already hard for me to get a fucking job yeah. right right and they're arresting him on a fucking dui yeah. which he yeah, it was wrong. Right. Right. But he parked his car and he was sleeping in his fucking car. Right. What the fuck? That's the most responsible thing to do when you're drunk. I feel like I'm, if I was a cop and I saw him, I'm like, all right, bro, let's go. I'll take you I was home. like, hey, where, where are you? <laughs> yeah, right. Where are you? He's like, you're gonna have to leave your car here. I'm gonna take you away. Yeah. yeah. Right. And if he would have been like, okay, I got you. It's like, cool. I'm not, I don't want to take you to a drunk tank. Like, yeah, right. Let's just put him yeah. over there. Exactly. Take him back home. But you're right, you touched on an important thing too. The 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 prison system, like the fact that you come out and you're you can't really get a job, like what do you like this is gonna inevitable if you're a criminal or you went to jail for doing some crime, uh, and it's you have cycle. no options when you get out and you can easily get violated on probation or parole. Yeah. And it's like I can't get a job. I need to fucking eat. Dude, yeah. I got bills. Like, what the fuck? I got to do something. Yeah. It's a cyclical you know? issue. It's like once you're once you're fucked, you're fucked for life. Yeah. And and that's a problem. It's they call it a correctional facility. Why? It's not a correctional it's not. facility. You're yeah. not helping these motherfuckers no, out. No, not at all. And especially when it's like non-violent crimes, like selling weed or whatever. What the fuck are you yeah, doing? Yeah, dude. You know? It's crazy that you can't vote when, you, when you're when you a felon too. Yeah. Isn't really? crazy? Yeah. Wow. I, I, well, I'm pretty sure that that's a thing. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like what the fuck? Why, why, why do you lose your right to vote? That's so yeah, sad. Yeah, that's weird. Like, what, who, what's going to happen? <laughs> you know? yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a that's very odd weird. concept, man. There's a, that's yeah, so it's, weird. It's weird. It's really weird. Uh, but there's just a lot of motherfuckers with money in positions of like lobbyists and and have the year of politicians. Like, that's like where the real. I just wish I was Superman. I couldn't be killed or nothing. Yeah. And I'd just be like, hey, fix this shit or I'm a laser blast all you motherfuckers. Yeah, I'd be like, all right. <laughs> that's when they get the tanks. That's when the police department gets those tanks. Yeah, you get but those it, tanks, I'm going to blow them up with my laser beam. Like, yeah, I'm a man of solutions. <laughs> Modern solutions. But the other thing, though, too, about like some guys that I've talked to that like were interested in being coming cops. I'm like, so like, what makes you want to become a cop? Like, like, what's your mindset? Like going in and they're like, and I remember this one dude, it was very, cause I was like, um, that's kind of fucked up. But like, I remember him just like kind of staring off, like into the distance and he just goes, you know, like, I just, I just want to see some action. You know what I mean? Like that feeling you get, like, that's, that's what it's about. Yep, you, know? you should not be a cop. And in my yeah, head, right. in my head, I was like, dude, someone fucking canceled this guy, you know, like, cause that's. You're, there's that's there's a lot of people like that because I yeah. had that uh, the the this guy Cosmo, this dating guy, and a lot of his clients, um, he's a dating coach, are cops. Mm-hmm. And you know they get into that conversation. They say like, there's always something about like these motherfuckers need to be put away immediately. Blah blah. blah. It's hyper aggressive shit yeah. and bullying or something. It's like you are not in the right mind state to be a fucking yeah. cop. Right. It should be to protect and serve my community. I want to make sure people are safe. Yeah. Right. Why not? Why is that not the answer? Yeah, I'm just yeah. ready to fuck somebody up, dog. And you know what I mean? That's, that's, <laughs> that's, like, bro, when you go into a situation like that, <laughs> it's already bad, right? And I'm sure there's times where they have to go into situations like that because you know it's. They have to predict themselves at a certain point. But at the same time, it's like like going back to what Jocko said on the Joe Rogan podcast. He was saying when he was in Iraq, they had to go and build relationships with the community that they were serving and servicing. 
and they got to know all the people because there's good people in the community. Any community you go to, you're going to find yeah, the good you people. Need those people to help you understand. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it, it provides context. Yeah. And that's what's important is that sometimes when you come into a situation, they don't have the context going in and, and it makes it a lot harder. Yeah. If right? you're patrolling a certain area, right? And you go to these community events, you start knowing people and let's say right. some shit goes down. It's like, oh, I know that guy. Yeah. And it's like, oh, what do you think about this person? They can have these conversations. It allows them to assess the situation. It actually keeps you more safe. Exactly. Because right. you become a part of this community. My parents have opened our business in you know not a great area of sacramento but we've been relatively pretty good because we've been there for so long and we know people in the community yeah and they know yeah they know you guys yeah so people leave us alone so we've mm. been there for like 30 something years and nothing has really happened to us yeah. yeah you know so like and that's the difference is is understanding your community and being a part of the community yeah if you're just some outsider coming in then I, you're not wanted exactly they're gonna always see you and if you're not making an effort to be a part of the community they don't want you either yeah, I wouldn't want some motherfucking dude to come up out of nowhere and tell me how to fucking live my life. Of exactly. course not. Who exactly. the fuck wants that? Exactly. You know what sucks though is because I have I went to high school with this dude and he became a cop and he's a, he's a really nice dude and I've seen him because he he does he works in South Pass and I was there and uh, he was just like him and another cop were just kind of walking down the street but they they were doing exactly that they were just like talking with people shooting the shit yeah. like laughing and stuff like with random people at a coffee shop and I was like I was like kind of like that's what they should be doing. Like, that's yeah, cool yeah. as fuck. They're just like laughing, having a good time, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And then they were just like, all right, guys, take care. Bang, 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 out. Like, just a quick, like, five-minute yeah. fucking chat. What's going on? How are you guys? Blah, blah, blah. Because, like, I'm, like it's, I'm... It's just touch base. It's really good because I'm at a point, too, when I see a cop, I don't want to fucking talk to a single For cop. For real. No. It's like, I don't want to have a conversation. And that's, me and neither. that's bad. Me neither. That's yeah. bad. Yeah. That's like, how sucks. you doing? I'm like, sup, pig? Yeah. <laughs> right? And they got my ass beat. And yeah. I'll be like, yeah, because I'm black. <laughs> <And they're> like, <laughs> And I'm gonna just th throw them at that weird little softball. They're like, what? Yeah, girl, I'm black motherfucker. <laughs> and they're gonna be like, what's you know going this? on here? Yeah, I'm crazy. <laughs> it's like, you're going to jail. It's like, I probably am, huh? <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, jeez. Did I provoke this situation? <laughs> yeah, I would too, motherfucker. <laughs> and, and like, it, it's so crazy how, like, that's the oldest running joke of all time yeah. is like police brutality oh, yeah. and, against black people. Like, that's, that's the oldest running joke. And everybody, no matter if people wanna deny it or not, when they hear Dave Chappelle talk about it or Chris Rock talk about it, everybody's laughing. Because you know, everybody knows it Everybody about knows it. the joke. It's some it's real true. shit. Everybody knows the joke. You know what's it's funny is my dad. So my dad, my dad was a great dude, but he was never the most law abiding citizen. Like he would always get like got into fights growing up and you know, he yeah. just he dibble dabbled in some shit. He dibble dabbled. So he never he hated cops. My dad hated, absolutely hated cops like growing up. He would always like he'd be like, please, Patrick, whatever you do, just don't be a cop. Like, yeah. He would always tell me. Like I knew if I wanted to break his heart. <laughs> like I was, you know, to be a cop, you know, like I always knew that was in my back pocket, but it was funny. Cause like we were having this conversation and cause he's been, he's had a lot of issues with cops. Like back in the day, like he would like have yeah. like gotten fights with cops and stuff like that. This is back in like the fifties when like, yeah. you could do that. And like, yeah, you know, some, uh, yeah. Like it, it, you didn't go to jail for life for some reason, but <laughs> yeah. Um, so he d just didn't like him. And I remember we we're having this conversation and he was kind of like, he, he was just being genuine. He was like, I don't understand like why, like, you know, like I'm, I get harassed too. Like I'm white and I get harassed all the fucking time. And I remember being like, yeah, that's it. it no one should get harassed. But I remember thinking like, well, it's because also like you've committed crimes, you know? Yeah. Like it's also kind of their job. It's like, like, it's like to, you have a record. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. They're going to they, arrest you. When they look at your ID and they say, this motherfucker's a felon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this guy has a fucking rap sheet, a literal rap sheet. <laughs> I was like, this kid was walking home from the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. are not the same. And, it's, and, it's, and, it goes, and then he was like, uh, he was kind of like, yeah, all right. <laughs> He's like, that's fair. So He's yeah, like, all right, point. that makes sense. Yeah. Maybe you should be You're a cop. sharp kid, man. Yeah. And like, the other thing, though, too, like everyone keeps talking about is like the whole fucking uh, statistic. Like, you know, actually white people get killed more by cops than... Than black people do, blah, blah, blah. It's a false statistic. But yeah. I know, but people say that. Well, also, like, there's like a shitload like, of white people, more white people. Exactly. And also, it's not a contest. Ex exactly. Yeah. And, and it's, it's like, like, don't you think that that's wrong? Like, should there be that many people getting killed by yeah, cops? Yeah, white, black, races? Mexican, doesn't matter. No one should be getting killed by cops. Yeah, like it, it's, it's not just a, like them problem it's a everyone's well, problem that's what i'm saying like we have an issue of of rhetoric too right because people seem to be okay with those situations when they say well well it's like well if you're gonna get fucked over then all of us should get fucked over no it's like nobody should get yeah, fucked over right. you shouldn't be okay with your your brother or your kin or somebody else getting fucked over as long as everybody gets fucked over equally yeah, yeah. that's a dumb thing to say yeah it's right like, right people should be treated fairly equally don't be okay with the lowest status quo like why the fuck and you know and that, that just shows that people just get into semantics all the time. Yeah. Like they're not trying to figure out a solution. Right. They're not trying to figure, they're not really hearing what you have to say either. Like they're not hearing what other people have to say about 
like the BLM movement and like the police brutality movement and all that stuff. Like they're not trying to hear you out. They're just trying to be like, well, I think you're being a crybaby. And actually this is, this is what it really is. See, that's why somebody just needs to fuck one of their children and give them interracial babies yeah, and then be like, well, see how your daughter's treated, see how your son's treated. And they're like, <laughs> Oh, maybe now I see it. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. you fucking right. shit. <laughs> yeah. That should be the goal, dude. Just for real. a bunch of black, Asian, and Mexican people just fucking the shit out of white people. Too. <laughs> yeah. Consensually at age and marrying them in love. Yes. yes. Under, do you believe in Christ? Good. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, baby, baby, baby. <laughs> baby <laughs> oh. Fucking. Hey, we should start a band. What the fuck? Dang. Ooh, what's our band going to be called, dude? Fucking the evolution. So- Wow. Seven. It's Evolution Ooh. Seven. Ooh. Yeah, we just gotta get four more guys and we're in, dude. Perfect. What's that? Alex is gonna be the, the singer, the drummer, or the rapper? The rapper he, and he's the, the he's the All rapper. Three. He's the rapper. Me and Pat will like we'll be like the roadies and like occasional beat makers, but like we're still dancer. not that I good. I feel like you'd be the go-go dancer for sure. You'd be the- <laughs> right. I could right. easily yeah. pick you ain't wrong. the fucking nipple wrong. for some reason. I feel like it's is an easy yeah. Right there. I feel like I could just, you know, dance any style that I wanted to. And if go-go dancing was the style, I could excel at that. You know what's funny? I, yeah. I, I know in the, the previous podcast we talked about uh, Chris D'Elia and shit. But I wonder if like Ari Shafir's kind of like, it's my time to come back. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, everybody forgot about the Kobe shit. Oh, yeah. Well, he's Ari- been coming around. I've been seeing him post stuff. And oh, really? Yeah, he's yeah. back. I've seen some, like some stuff. I'm People like, oh, forget he's about he's that back. shit so quick though. It's crazy how fast shit like I, that happens. Yeah. I wonder if the Chris D'Elia thing, like if this is how long that's going to stay with him. Like, I wonder after, like, say, where he's going to be in the next, like, six months. Are people still going to remember him for that little slip-up that he had or this incident, whether whether it's true or not? Like, I wonder what's going to happen. This is always, I think, going to stain him, no matter, even if he proves with the emails or whatever that nothing happened. Because, like, with the Louis C.K. thing, like, I wonder how long for him, too. It's like, how long is he going to have Well, he'll never get back to, like, Dave Chappelle status, right? He's not going to be he's one gonna, of the three goats. You yeah, know? he's gonna he's gonna do well continually in terms of like he'll book out his venues, he'll make his money, he'll still be able to do what he wants. Yeah. But every time the topic of Louis C.K. comes up, that's going to come out first. But Louis ain't gonna be on that special anymore. Did you guys see those? No, was it good? Special? He has a new special. Oh, you don't know? No, he dropped it like at the beginning of quarantine. Yeah, 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 yeah. on his website, he just he just dropped it. What uh, the fuck? Yeah, it was actually sick. I liked it. I, I refuse any to watch about, it. talks about. <laughs> nah, he gonna watch it. He gonna watch it. Being a politician right now, uh, man. Let me tell you something here. I do not agree <laughs> with Louis C.K. I think he is a trash bag, and I will never support. What's the what's what's the website called? Louis C.K. Louis C.K. <sighs> Louis C.K. Jerks. dot com. I'm talking about man. Yeah, but, but he he uh, he talks about it. Like he has he has bits about like everything. That I'm happened. curious to see what it is. It's only interesting. So I can give it a one star on Rotten Tomato. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. You, what if what if you think think it was really funny and it's really good? I will not because I do not care for him. And in fact, I do not listen to R. Kelly anymore. It's the remix to Ignition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we listened to the car wow. today on the way to McDonald's. Didn't, I did not. <sighs> that song. So good though. This guy's a good politician. It is a good song. I had no idea he had a special that came out. Yeah. Came out. I, I, I heard think season in beginning two, of April. I heard season two of uh, Surviving R. Kelly came out. A while there's ago. a season there's two. Yeah, I, I thought it was just heard. like a documentary. There, I mean, this here's the thing, dude. He's done. Yeah, he's done. He's done. It's like yeah, you're you know I mean? being a dead horse. Yeah. Well, be, well, even the first documentary that they put out, they dragged it out really, yeah, really, yeah. really long. It didn't oh, have really? to be. They could have. They could have made it concise with the same stories and just made it hit way harder. Yeah. But mm. They're trying to pull this out for money, and that's where I'm just like, now you're just kind of not taking this shit seriously. Like, yeah. like, come on. Yeah, you're like, exploiting this is, it. Yeah, you're exploiting this. This is a very serious situation. This guy fucking touched everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, Damn, bro. Well, that, that wraps up this episode. <laughs> uh, you know what? Everybody who listens to this podcast, they go, dude, you guys end on the weirdest notes. We do. We know. always do. <laughs> like, well, fuck our killing. Believe in your Lord and Savior, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> well, guys, That's a great Bieber impression. Make wow. sure thank on you. Sundays you guys go to church. And <laughs> thank you for listening <laughs> to the Cleanse Genius Brain podcast uh we got nick the ear we also got patrick t riley you can find them on instagram at nick the ear and patrick.t.riley Yee. so give them a go the big mad podcast they haven't put out an episode in 17 days <laughs> but they will eventually we are here baby come on yeah. killing it, killing we, it. we have to do it in person this time we're, we're not doing the zoom stuff anymore so yeah the zoom shit kind of sucks perfect we'll see y'all next time peace <laughs>